experience of being a pharmacy technician. Here we are with the pharmacy abbreviations, also known as pharmacy SIG codes. You really need to know these because you're going to see these on just about every prescription you ever see for the rest of your life. So these are very important. Watch this section again over and over until you get it. We'll make kind of a game out of some of them. I really recommend the 3x5 index cards to try to just have some repetition. And then also there's the supplemental material you can look at that has a more comprehensive list of all the uh, pharmacy abbreviations. Now the ones that we cover in this particular section will be a little more honed in on to what you should be looking for um, in the test, in the exam. But uh, you can always look at the supplemental materials to get a, a more on the whole look of what you're looking for. So why do doctors even write in this funny way? QD, BID, all that? Well, the first reason is it just takes less time. Doctors don't have much time. They have appointments to keep. You can quickly write something like that whenever you have uh, quick SIG codes. The second reason is there's just a finite amount of space on a prescription. Um, you know, if you wrote, take one to two tablets by mouth every six hours before meals and at bedtime, uh, quantity of 30, six refills, whatever the case may be, uh, it, takes, it takes a long time to write all that. So you do it as quick and as uh, fast as you can do with taking up as little space on that prescription as you can because you may have multiple medications to write for. Um, so study this next section hard and uh, study it often. Let's first look at this, uh, these sick codes to say how often, how often we should be taking the medications. We'll look at the first one, it says QD or Q daily. Uh, most people will recommend that Q daily is what is written because QD looks like QO, which doesn't necessarily mean anything, but it can look like a few other things. For instance, four down, you'll see QID. And if you say Q daily, it's a little bit easier to see. BID, think bicycle, okay, by, two twice daily, and then TID, it's, uh, think tricycle, TID three times a day. QID, you can think like the number, the word quad, quad, like quad means four, so four times a day. And then after that, uh, most prescribers just start writing five X a day, six X a day, seven X a day, and so on. Past that, you might see some uh, every so many hours, you can see Q 24 hours. Anytime you see Q, you can replace the word every, for what you see there. So Q24 hours is every 24 hours, or Q24H here, every 24 hours. Q12H, every 12 hours. And then I just put Q blank H, because you can have Q2H every two hours, Q5H every five hours. Whatever the prescriber deems appropriate for the prescription, they may put it like that. You'll also see QOD, which just means every other day, which again uh, gets kind of confusing if they just write QD as well um, because sometimes it's hard to read. And we'll look at some actual prescriptions so I can show you just how hard it is to read some of these. Now, one thing that's important to note is that prescribers sometimes don't know this very well. They're not going to know it as well as you're going to know it. And sometimes they just make up their own stuff on this. So um, look out for sometimes whenever they just write it however they uh, want to. And it'll be in a shorthand that you probably understand. Um, but it may not be the official SIG codes that you'll learn here. Always on the examination, uh, the certification examination, you'll get, uh, you'll get the proper SIG codes, of course, because that's what they're testing you on. Um, one last note here on the Q12 hours, Q24 hours, sometimes they won't put H and they'll put a little circle. It looks like kind of like a degree sign um, up at the top. Okay, let's try to do something a little different with these next few slides. I'm going to show up a SIG code up on the top and you're going to try to tell me what that SIG code means and then a few seconds later I'll show you at the bottom. So you've memorized a few of them on that slide and then you're going to regurgitate to me on these next slides. So we'll bring up the first one. You can see it reads QID. So think, what does QID stand for? All right, we'll check out, see if you're right. Four times a day. If you said four times a day, you are correct. Let's check out the next one. You can help you're scoring at home. We'll check QOD. QOD, what does that mean? QOD. Does it mean once daily? Does it mean twice daily, every other day? It means every other day. Good if you had that one. So now let's go to how often. How often are we taking these? I have QHS, every night at bedtime. Generally, QHS just means every night at bedtime. QAM, exactly what I said earlier. Q means every. AM means morning. And then QPM means every evening. Every evening. Here's a good one. AC and PC. 
A, you'll always hear means before, whenever it's like this. So A, C, C, um, if you ever know Spanish, you know comida is a meal. So before meals, A, C is before food or before meals. P, C is after. You can think post, post means after, and post C, uh, like I said, I like to think comida, but uh, if, you're, if you're not into Spanish, just, just remember it. PC means after food or after meals. And then a real important one is PRN, just means as needed. And so study this material, PRN. So let's look at a couple of these and let's see what they say. How about PC? You know, I covered it earlier. I want you to think, what does PC mean? Let's check out what you got. Did you say after meals? If you got after meals, then you're really putting it into your brain quickly. Now, you're going to have to look at the supplemental material and maybe watch this lecture several times over to really get these. I've recommended it a thousand times. Flash cards. Just buy yourself some 3x5 index cards. Write the SIG code on one side and write the translation of it on the other side, and you will succeed. Let's go on to one more. How about QHS? What does QHS mean? If I tell you to take one tablet by mouth QHS, how often am I telling you to take it? How about one tablet by mouth every night at bedtime? Every night at bedtime. Very good if you got that. So now we've discussed how often. Let's move on to how or where to take it. Um, if I say, uh, you know, by mouth or if it's an injection, we're going to need to be able to define that on the label. So we'll start out with IM, that's intramuscularly, okay, we're going to put a needle here, that's an injection, goes straight into the arm, the leg, right into the muscle. What if it's not going quite as deep? So IM's fairly deep. The next one, SQ, we're going to call it sub Q. Sometimes you'll see it written SUB hyphen Q, SUB hyphen Q, but it means subcutaneously, and that is not near as deep, okay? Uh, just uh, just into the fatty tissue. A lot of times you'll see it given right behind the arm um, or right to the back side of the arm. Uh, next one is PO. That one you're going to see on most prescriptions in a retail pharmacy because it's mainly oral medications. It means by mouth. Take one tablet, PO. means take one tablet by mouth. Uh, last one there on the left side is SL sublingually just means up under the tongue whenever you hear sub okay submarine is under the the water uh sublingual lingual means tongue so under the tongue um three on the right side here you're probably pretty familiar with the top one iv intravenously um it means obviously exactly what it says inside the vein and then the last two pr and pv pr much like po is by mouth now we're talking pr per rectum, okay, by rectum. So you wanna take it rectally when you see something PR. If you're thinking about what type of uh, medication might go PR, think suppositories, okay? Suppositories will have to go into the rectum. And then you could also get some vaginal suppositories that would be entered PV, okay? That's vaginally. So um, things that need to be uh, inserted into the body uh, rectally or vaginally, PR or PV, all right. Now I've separated these out because these are very similar on this slide. How and where to take, we're looking at the right eye and right ear. So eyes and ears here. So all eyes and ears on this slide. Uh, we'll start with O, O, D. Anytime you hear D um, in a situation like this, you wanna think of the right side. So O, ophthalmic, meaning eye, and D, meaning right, so right eye. The next one is OS, OS meaning left eye. So S in a SIG code here meaning to the left and O meaning ophthalmic, so left eye. And then the last one there, OU meaning both eyes, okay? Uh, no, uh, no Oklahoma fans here, no, uh, no boomer sooner, just OU does not mean University of Oklahoma, it means both eyes. Um, there on the right side, AD means the right ear. Some people will tell me they help remember that A means ear because it's like audio. Like you hear your music, you hear your, your beats by Dre, you hear them in your, your audio in your ear. So A, D, again, D meaning right, right ear. And then A, S, again, S meaning left, A for audio in the ear, left ear. And then A, U, both ears. So when you see U, and you just, uh, you're thinking both, and then we can look at the A or the O, whether it means uh, ear or eye. 
So here we go again. I've got this nice blank screen. A S A S. I think if I say take one drop. A S A S. Did you say left ear? Left ear is correct. A like audio is ear. S in this case means left. Okay. Our next SIG code, we're going to have SL, SL. So if I say take one tablet, SL, Q6 hours, what's SL? It means under the tongue. Remember, sub, like submarine, under the tongue, lingual tongue, under the tongue. All right, so here's some miscellaneous ones, and you really will see these fairly often. Um, C with a bar over it, the letter C with a bar over it, that means with and it's just easy to write many doctors will write w with a slash after it and that's that's fine but traditionally c with a bar over it means with and then s with a bar over it the letter s is in sam with a bar over it means without so with c with a bar over it without s with a bar over it on down remember when we had the uh, trivia question a while ago for sl sublingual under the tongue well, the type of tablets you would put under the tongue are ODT tablets, orally disintegrating. You can think like meltable tablets, that sort of thing. Um, that's orally, that's ODT, orally disintegrating tablets. And then GTT, or just the plural version, GTTS, that means a drop, okay, or drops. So when you see GTT, you're thinking eardrops, eye drops, whatever kind of drops there may be. Um, that's what GTT is. All right, so let's look at some medication abbreviations. These are common uh, abbreviations that stand for a medication and not necessarily a how or how often. So the first one is APAP, that's acetaminophen. Uh, you, you may right now just call it Tylenol. That's a really important one to know because it'll be written as APAP for Tylenol, but many medications have Tylenol in them and you'll see it written on the prescription with APAP. How about aspirin, the next one? Aspirin, you'll just see written as A-S-A. A is -A. an apple, S is in Sam, A. That's the reason it's A-S-A -A instead of just like say A-S-P is because aspirin is known as acetyl salicylic acid. So you can see the A-S-A -A there. And then the last one, hydrochlorothiazide. Man, thank goodness they have a shortened version of that word. Can you imagine having to write that word um, on there? So again, that's why the doctors even have these SIG codes. But it's a HCTZ, and that's how many people will even refer to it in a pharmacy is, hey, can you grab me a bottle of HCTZ? So there we have it. We have the pharmacy abbreviations. Learn these. Learn them well. I mentioned the index cards because they're just a great way to learn them. Look at one side, you wonder what it is. You look at the other side, you find out what it is. So really use those hard. Study these hard. We're going to have another section on this where we do some real-world examples, and that's coming in the next section.